Hey y'all! Well, time for another Loki video. This one we're going to be soldering all the solid state parts on here. And again, this is a really slow video. And I'm not sure this is really for everyone, but several people have commented and sent me emails saying they really enjoy your really slow videos where you show us just you working. And so let's get busy putting this thing together. Okay, so the next step we want to do is solder the tube sockets in. So first I make sure that they're level and might have to tweak the pins around a little bit to make sure they're, you know, look mostly level in both directions. They don't have to be perfect, but you want them at least fairly close. And I found it's easier to start on the top side and tack a few of the pins in place. Maybe just one on each side like this. And then we can flip it over and do the underside. And then double check that they, they look nice and level. And then look at them from this direction to make sure they look pretty straight, nice and even. Turn it over and solder in the rest of these pins. And there's no reason to be skimpy with the solder. I'm going to turn on my little fan here so I don't get fixated by the soldering fumes. And again, there's no reason to be skimpy with the solder on this. And then when you're done, as you can see, the solder comes all the way through and gets a really good solder joint on these tube sockets. Got them nice and level. Those are going to work great. So the next thing we have is down here on this end, we've got these 0.22 ohm resistors. 
They kind of these are not directional, so you can put them in either way. And we'll pop those guys in. those make sure those look good like that come back over so out of the other side we want to get these as close to the board as we can because this is one of the taller things And on this build, I'm trying to get the top side of the board closer to the top of the chassis than I have in some of my other builds. Snip those off. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is install these, these power diodes. This is our bridge rectifier for our main power or the B plus and these are one amp thousand volt diodes I just use my little pair of jewelers pliers and bend these over And the order I solder this stuff on the boards is I do all the resistors first, then I solder in the semiconductors, and then finally solder in the capacitors. I'm going to make sure that these go with the band on this end. And then we're going to come in here with our little pieces of cardboard. Space them up off the board just a breath. And actually, I'm going to solder in these first two like this, and then come back and solder in the second two. As you'll see when we flip the board over, it's really hard to solder these second two with these in place. So we'll go ahead and solder these two guys in place get my fan going here See there, all the components are standing up just a little proud of the board, just so it doesn't trap the heat between the components and the circuit board. Not that this stuff's going to be getting super hot, but that's just a good, good practice to get into. 
like that. We'll come in here and solder these four leads up. And the next thing will be our Zener diodes. Which in conjunction with the transistor, they create a voltage regulator for the B+. And that's one of the reasons the board says 230 to 280 volts. The actual voltage is regulated by this transistor and the Zener diodes that we're fixing to solder in next. Okay, the next thing are our Zener diodes. And I use an old camera lens as a loop to be able to read these tiny letters that are on these diodes, but you can use a magnifying glass or maybe if you got super killer vision you can just read them. These are the 5374s, which go in these first two positions. And I'm not real sure it really matters because these are just wired up in series. But I'm going to put them on the board in the places that they have labeled for them. And again, I'm going to make sure you put them in with the stripe going in the correct direction. again, I think I'm going to solder them in at pairs at a time. I do believe they make tools for bending these leads over. If you really want it to be super pretty. But I think just using just some jeweler's pliers or even your fingernail works fine. Let's make double sure these are the right part numbers. These are supposed to be 5373s. And they are. And we'll get our little piece of cardboard under here. Yeah. Solder these up. A little rack of Zeter diodes. So now we've got a couple of options here. We could go ahead and start soldering in some of these capacitors, but I think I'm going to go ahead and solder in this bridge rectifier, and it's made where the 
leads are spaced differently so there's only one way to put this in here you cannot put it in upside down we want to put it in as far as it'll go I probably need to put something under here and at least for the first solder joint so that it is pushed all the way up against the board as tight as I can get it and I'm actually okay with it like leaning out like that instead of being like that up against the resistor so can I let it tilt over like that and get this soldered up And that's the, that's the rectification for our DC heaters. Like I said, it doesn't hurt anything to get this like away from these resistors. And there's no point in, we got plenty of room over here. So that's all done. And so like I was showing you, if you angle this, it gives you some space between these components. There's no point in having those just jammed right up against each other. I think we're going to solder in this little transistor a little later. But I will warn you, the board says that this is supposed to be, and let me look at the number here. The board says it's supposed to be a 13009, and they send a 13005, which is a lower spec part than the board specifies. So I would go ahead and replace this with the higher wattage 009 version. And I also get a little heat sink that'll snap on this to just give a little heat relief to this transistor. So the next thing we're going to do is start soldering in the capacitors. So let me get all those ready. Well, I hope some of you are enjoying this slower paced video series and again I know this isn't for everyone but I have had quite a few viewers ask me to just show us some videos with just you working it's relaxing to come home from work and watch something like this so I hope at least some of you guys out there are enjoying this we got the solid state stuff in next time we're gonna do the capacitors and you're probably looking at this board going well Skokie you've already put the capacitors in there I know I'm, I'm recording this part of the video later but anyway next video we're going to do the capacitors and then we'll have the board finished like you see here and it turned out really sweet and then we got a nice big power supply heat sink because we put the capacitors on the bottom but spoiler on the next video about doing that so anyway I think too we're going to go ahead and do the fab work as kind of one of these slower videos too and just show you guys that have never done this kind of fab work that this stuff is not that hard and this is a really easy project to get your feet wet doing chassis fabrication work and I know that's probably the most intimidating part of these builds there is a little bit of outlay in tools to get started doing this but you know, with any kind of hobby, there always is a little bit of upfront spinning you have to do so that you can do projects and do more stuff on your own. So, hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please like the video. Please subscribe. That helps a lot. So does liking the videos. Comment if you're enjoying this. That really kind of spurs me on, too, to keep doing content like this. And thank you to you Patreon folks and folks that donate to my website. All that stuff just keeps this channel rolling. So until next time, have a nice day.